Hi, it's Mike Thornton again from Pro Tools Expert, and today I want to take a look at the new Blue Cat Audio MB7 mixer. Now, what's so special about this plugin? Well, they've had the MB7 out for a while. It's basically a plugin that you can insert onto a track, and in this case, I've got it on a mixed track, in fact, a backing track, and it'll split the audio into four separate bands. So we've got set of controls for the first band and another set of controls for the second band and so on and so forth. And what this means is we can process the audio in each of the bands slightly differently. We can obviously change the level. So let's just start playing the music. So I can increase the volume of each of the bands or decrease it. And we can obviously change the crossover point, the point at which we split between the bands. We can change the level here on the fader. We've also got the standard pan, so I could actually put the bass, pan the bass hard over, not something one would normally do. But one might consider panning, say, some of the low mids across slightly to one side and the higher mids across to the other side. Just provide a little bit more interest in the stereo. So those are all possibilities. We can mute a band, or we can solo just the one band. But one of the new features in version two of the MB7 is the option to have plugins inserted and so you can see here that we've got two plugin slots and so if I click on one of the plugin slots it says load VST because basically what we can do with the MB7 not only is it a band splitting plugin but also it will host VST plugins so I'm running in Pro Tools 11 at the moment so I could host plugins which I can't normally run in Pro Tools 11 so we could load a VST plugin and I'm going to select, in this case, the Blue Cat Audio Dynamics plugin. And so now what we can do is, at the moment, this VST plugin is now inserted only on the low band. So we can start to adjust the audio. Bring the threshold down, bring the ratio up. And you can hear to the low end is now changing we can just adjust the knee and so all I'm doing all this processing here is only happening on the first bottom band here so we can just solo it by itself just to see what it's sounding like so we can make adjustments here if we want to we can just put it back into the mix and you'll notice also as I move my controls around the colors change so you can see which band I'm working on and another option is we've got the option to spread the stereo image of a band, which is something you won't find on many of these sorts of plugins. So that's mono for this third band. And then that's stereo. If I just solo this one, give you a sense of what's going on. So that's normal stereo. Now it's mono. And then we can width, we can increase the width of the stereo. So let's just put that back. So of course I could in fact just take this down to one band. You can see here that we have up to from one to seven bands. If I take it up to seven bands, the plugin automatically rearranges itself. It's left the plugin that I put in on the first band exactly in that band. But of course I could go the other way and go right down to one band and then insert whatever VST type plugin I want. And hey presto, it will enable me to host any VST plugins in Pro Tools 11. One thing to be aware of is that in Pro Tools 11, the VST plugins do need to be 64-bit plugins. So if we just go back to our normal four bands, 
There are a number of things that we can do with the view. We can turn the overall frequency response off. So if I just give you a boost like that, you can see we can turn the overall shape off. We can turn the bands on and off. Uh, we can hide the controls because I can obviously also adjust it from here or from the faders. We can also turn off the analysis. So if I just play the audio, you see at the moment we have a spectrum analysis taking place. But then a really neat feature is not only can you have a spectrum analysis, but we can also have a spectrogram. So you can have the gray spectrogram. So you can see the different frequencies of a lighter or darker color in gray, or we can go for the color spectrogram. So one of the things I like to do with this when I'm using the spectrogram is I can actually turn off different sections. So I can turn off the knobs and I can make it visually bigger. So that really helps me to see what's going on. And then very quickly, turn the knobs back on again. And you can see we have different sizes. So we can have the mid small, the medium, and then the large. We can hide and show the plugins. And we can also change the opacity the opacity of it so we can really see what's going on behind it's so all very nice now coming back to the uh, crossover controls we can obviously adjust the frequency here from these knobs we can adjust it here but we can also change the slope of the crossovers so we can make them quite tight if we need to so we can adjust it but of course the great thing to bear in mind about a band splitting program is that the uh, crossovers are managed so that when the signal is combined again the overall frequency response is the same rather than trying to manually use a series of eq plugins it'll never really work and again the thing about a crossover uh, plug-in is that the phase is also considered across these crossover areas so really well worth doing there's also a huge range of factory presets so again one of the things you can do if you're starting to get used to this is to go through the factory presets you'll find that there are a number of presets for different layouts there are some that enable you to just change the range and that shows you the range of uh, dbs on here you can see here not uh, 24 dbs uh, we could change the range to plus 6, minus 18. You can see here now we've got plus 6 to minus 18. So there are presets uh, for that. We can go back into the factory presets. Uh, there are some here already set up for particular things. So lead vocal remover uh, enables you to... Uh, use the plugin to try and uh, contain or reduce the uh, lead vocal so there's loads of different presets that you can look at which will help you get to grips with this plugin so here's one with eq with seven bands so you can see now we have full seven bands of eq there's not only two pre-fade insert points where we can put vst plugins if i click on the bottom of this button here you'll see we've also got two post-fade plugin slots. And again, all these plugin slots, you can click on and load a VST plugin into that, and away you go. So that's really, really neat. So this plugin does a whole range of things. It allows you to process audio in bands. So brilliant for mastering, but also you could put this, for instance, on uh, some of the stems, on the subgroups. You might put one of these specifically on the drum subgroup so you can manage and process those differently. Now, there's also abilities to group controls together. So if I just use these buttons here, these are the quick group buttons. So clicking those two buttons, now these two groups are locked together. But I can also hit a reverse button. So now when I decrease one, the other one increases. So you can do the reverse. And that applies to the control. So the panning will go opposite. The spreads will go opposite. But obviously if I take the reverse off, then they work together. 
and if there's an offset, that offset is maintained. So you've got quick groups within the plugin, which are the same as the local groups. So we've got different groups. The global groups relate to being able to create groups between different plugins within the same project. You may have another MB7 on another track and you can in fact apply these same grouping techniques across multiple plugins. And again, that's something that I'm pretty sure is unique to the Blue Cat audio range. So we've so far been looking at the straight stereo version of the MB7. We now take a look at the dual version. You'll notice here that there are two faders for each of the bands and I can adjust those separately or I can link them together. But also one of the other really nice features of the dual version of the MB7 is that we can switch it into mid side mode. So now what that means is that these faders are adjusting either the mid so I can increase the mono content of that band or decrease it or increase the side, the stereo, and you can hear that the width of this band is increasing. And of course any plug-in that I put in here now would follow that uh, same processing. So now I'm using this plug-in in mid-side mode. Obviously at the moment I'm processing both channels separately, but if I had a plugin where I could separate those out, I could process the side, I could compress the side harder than the mid. We've now got the a master section again with faders and you can see here that I've uh, gone over a little bit at some point, really useful to have those overs which you can click on and reset. So it's a really, really neat plugin. We've got the different spectrum analysis. We can use a spectrogram or normal spectrum analysis. We can turn on and off either some of the displays or we can hide different parts of the plugin. We can make the plugin look much bigger or normal size. And of course, the real biggie is the plugin hosting. So you could just use this plugin in one band mode and insert a plugin and just use it to host plugins or you can use it in multiband mode and really get some brilliant mastering options. So I hope that's whetted your appetite for Blue Cat Audio's MB7 mixer which also hosts VST plugins in a Pro Tools 11 project. See you again soon.